What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, and Zika Miller, and the villain for the again. We're a bet on Quartz Party Blood Drive. It's the same day. Uh, you know, I, I I got three three more hours to record something, so I think I'm just going to record some Book of Shadows, Chapter Six, Blood Drive, Book of Shadows. We're back with our human. This music is bumping. What the hell? I'm back. Kishi Numa's probably looking all over for me by now. Maybe I should head back. So I really do need to unseal all the pillars as soon as I possibly can. So, uh, who's gonna tell her that's not the best course of action? Who keeps on putting these back up after I take them down? Like, stop. Hell no. Hell no. Surely you don't expect me to let my guard down after hearing that, right? <laughs> oh! I guess it didn't matter. I let my guard down anyway. See, this is a type of this is a type of beat that gets my cock rock, bro. <laughs> Oh my goodness, why are you still here? I thought I escaped you. The Argus Cube began reacting to something. Does this mean there's a pillar over here? I thought I escaped you, dog. A burned rat. He's not that scary, because I can not just kind of weave him. He's slow, so I can weave him. That's your Suzuki. You shouldn't move it. You shouldn't look. That girl's gonna die. Let's not remove the cloth. You feel me? Feel me. Let's remove the cloth. I slowly removed the cloth, covering the object. What I found beneath it, beneath it was, by all appearances, just an ordinary mirror. Nothing but my own reflection stared back at me. Ooh, that's creepy. What? I didn't even move. You might want. You might want to move now. You might want to move. I recommend that you move. I stared into the glass, dumbfounded as a shadowy figure in a black dress appeared right behind me, shrouded in an eerie mist. I recommend that you move. So I, I mean, Gremlin. The figure held a hatchet in her right hand and was raising it into the other strike. I pressed the wrong thing. My neck split open from the phantom impact and blood spread it out. From the corner of my eye, I can see the gremlin in the mirror swinging her hatchet again, continue to hack. Oh Lord, whenever the hatchet struck me in the mirror, my groom, groom, my wounds grew bigger in reality. That was most definitely not an illusion. The next instant, my vision spun 360 degrees, my head corkscrewing closer and closer to the floor. I heard and felt a loud thud followed by a painful roll until I finally came to rest. I now had a perfect view of the ceiling. From behind me, I could hear the sound of blood gushing into the air. I only had a few seconds of sight before my consciousness would fade completely. And in those seconds, my sight was already beginning to blur. But just as the darkness was beginning to set in, someone approached my head, crouched down beside it, and stared directly into my failing eyes. It was Nakashima, drenched in blood with a satisfied look on her face. I tried with every one, every ounce of my ounce of will and left in my body to get just that single word out, but there would never be any moment, movement or sound from any part of me ever again. And what was to be my last, very last moment of my life, Nakashima's face removed itself from my line of vision and then, briefly, I saw a shoe coming toward me. There was a spinning sensation for a split second and then, finally, unceremoniously, I was gone. These, these wrong ends are, a big part of why these wrong games are so disappointing 
is because they don't come with any CGs. That's very disappointing. I only have only have one other option, so what does it matter? Just gotta choose the only other option I have. My reflection moving independently held her hand toward the mirror as if to say, give it here. Half on instinct and half on pure supposition. I motioned like I was handing the Argus cube to this other me. <laughs> Suddenly something fell out of my hand onto the floor with a substantial clang. I bent down to look more closely at it and found it to be the crystal glimmering with purple light. And as the other pillar crystals, this light was emanating from within the stone itself. There was no mistaking it. The fifth pillar is base. It's the mirror pillar which, which sees through everything. I glanced back up the mirror and again, as anticipated, the gremlin was no longer visible. Only I was reflected. Thank God, only one more to go. But just then. Oh, okay, big guy's here. Hold on. Hold on. Nearby window began to rattle and groan. Rattle and hold on. And from the corner of my eye, I could see several black crows fly past it out so outside. Hold on. When I turned to look, I found a num I found the number to be well more than expected. It was nothing but crows, as far as the eye could see. Freaking Misuto! Oh my good! Where is he's just chilling, sipping wine while every while he's causing chaos and havoc in the real world what is this dude issue i expect nothing less from a satanic monster like this guy in the very center of a dark mostly empty room i patiently sat on the sofa with my legs crossed I'm, i don't want to voice this guy i must have looked like the king of darkness you think you so cool don't you you're not even old enough to drink wine you probably sitting there like it's some type of movie you think you, you think you got cameras on you so you trying to sit through the bitterness of that alcohol that liquor you sipping on, boy. You got a penis coming up the top of your head. Why your hair shaped like that? I'm sick of people like you. People like you disgust me. Black and yellow, black and yellow bees, bro. Get out of here. Okay, I must have looked like the king of darkness. With a smug grin on my face, a glass of fine red wine in my hand. My goblet, if you will. It won't be long now before Ayumi completes the hexagram. I pulled a stone from my pocket. It was the same design as the Argus cube I'd given to Ayumi, though it had a different glow to it. <laughs> this is no charm, girl. Like Argus has a hundred eyes, I've got you firmly in my sights, Ayumi. It's a wonder you haven't caught on yet. It's not a wonder. She's stupid. I don't... What made you think she would catch on? She's stupid. Now you just polluting the environment. Why you just breaking stuff? Now then, I should start my preparations. My book of shadows must have a proper receptacle after all. Book of shadows. Oh, snap. We with Yuka and Satsuki. Yo, Yukes, where are we? Satsuki, don't leave my side, okay? If you do, we may never see each other again. What? That would blow! We're supposed to be best buds forever, right? Yeah! Oh, there's Misuto. Sorry to keep you waiting, Yuka. That was a long break. What were you doing in there anyway? Um, where is my big brother? I seem to have lost track of him somewhere. Come on, Yuka, let's go find him together. Okay. And don't trust this guy. This guy's totally up to something, Yuka. Don't let your guard down. This is bumping. I, I won't. Big brother, where are you? There was no response to her call. Yukes, it'll be okay. We'll find him. 
So what is this place anyway? What kind of crazy trick did you use to get us here? I think we were both out cold for a sec back there. Don't they just ain't right about this whole situation? I'm getting some serious guilty vibes from you. Tatsugi's tone was harsh, though it felt forced enough that I could tell there was some modicum of anxiety behind it. You better not have lured us to this abandoned schoolhouse so you could try anything funny. I've got my eye on you. Please keep your eyes on him. I just kept my mouth shut. There was no point in saying anything. This person wasn't worth the effort. It behooved me to just keep walking and hope she'd shut up. No, no, no. This guy needs to be killed. It, it, like it would, it, uh, 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 we we should probably beat this guy with hammers. Here you go, eating again, you hungry, hungry hippo. Satsuki. You just, you just eating. Okay, okay. Can we? Huh? Oh, sorry. Just feels like my energy is running low. You want some? No, I'm okay. So I've always wondered, where do you keep all those potato chips? I've got a bunch of different varieties tucked away under my skirt. Personal recognition is the happy I butter flavor. Hush. Oh, oh, mm, delicious. <laughs> you can seem to be scared out of her gourd when, she, when we arrive, but if nothing else, this Satsuki girl's weird behavior seems to have broken her out of her shell a little. Shut up, Misuto. I think it was this way. Oh my goodness! From somewhere in the distance, we can hear an upbeat, almost carnivalesque tune playing very loudly. The sound of which was accompanied by a crunch of Satsuki's potato chips, while she, which she was still busily chomping away at. Yo, turn this crap off! This sure is something else, you. How do you find this place anyway? I've actually been here once before, but something different now. Mm, oh, hey, you, you want some? Thanks, Satsuki, but I'm good for now. Oh my goodness. It's still playing? I'm gonna just turn the volume down, bro. I don't wanna hear this crap. Dang, it's gonna, it's gonna like be hard to hear if something tries to creep up on us, though. Oh, they probably want us to go to where it is, so let's go to the gym. Go, 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 go. Hey, so good shit on the road. Ride it like on the bow. I done did it in your pocket. Bow. Go, 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 go. Hey, so good shit on the road. Ride it like on the bow. I done did it in your pocket. Bow. What the freak? What did I step on? Dog, on everything, I ain't even step on nothing. They, they bugging. There was nothing but a gaping hole in the middle of the gym. So Satoshi's not in here. Are you sure he's anywhere? And where exactly are we again? The little butt munch is really starting to piss me off. I made sure it didn't show on my face, but I was not happy with this twerp one bit. Twerp is insane. Please, I'm begging you, like, update your language. Worst party is infamous for using that elderly slang. Satsuki, this is a place that's haunted by a lot of really scary ghosts. Me, my brother, and all his friends were trapped in here once before. What? You almost had me there for a sec. Didn't expect you of all people to start telling scary stories. Just don't leave my side, Satsuki. Dangerous. Okay. Yeah, let's not... Damn, bro. It get tragic in here. Hold on. It get tragic in here. Can we see what's through here now? No? I'm the head ma- hold on. Big brother! Oh no, no, no. Oh, okay. Music's off. Thank God. I was getting tired of that music. Dang. This hole goes down pretty deep. Isn't this run down old- Isn't this run down old crap shack like super dangerous place to be? I bet even a gentle breeze can knock this place to the ground. It's pretty much total. Misato's about to kick her down. 
Misu, bro. She was really tat trying my patience. I began positioning myself behind her very slowly. Hey, what you doing? Big brother really doesn't seem to be here, Misuto. I can see that. Let's head somewhere else. She ain't even do nothing though. That's the crazy part. He's annoying for no. That's scared. You seem a little tired. Are you okay, Yuka? Do you want a drink of water? Don't drink no water. Don't drink no water, cause we're not about to have a repeat of chapter three. I'm fine. I'll take some. Dang, why she snatch it like that? Thirsty much. And he finally addresses me. My mom's just always telling me to drink a lot of water through there's so much salty potato chips. Your mom, huh? Do you have good parents? I don't know. Depends on if you think hands-off parenting is progressive or lazy. I say they're pretty good, though. I see. And you're gonna go for more. Oh my goodness. You, you thirsty, ain't you? You want me to throw it away now? You're a dude. You handed it to me. You should be the one to dispose of it when I'm done. That's the mark of a true gentleman. Back me up on this, you. Huh? Oh, yeah, whatever she's talking about. You aren't even listening, were you? Hold on. I, I like Satsuki. She's kind of funny. She's kind of funny. She's pretty silly. A pretty silly, goofy, you know? She's a little goofball. You can't hate that. But why, though? Why? Uh? You jerk. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Dang, he, he literally got cooked. All right, let's go. Okay, this is where we're supposed to go. What's wrong, Satsuki? What, what, what's the dude's name? Kedwin? The dude that made this game? Kedwin? What's your issue, man? What's your issue? Let's stop with this. I'm not reading this stupid dialogue. Like, it adds nothing to the story. You're just weird. Oh! How do you spill highly chemical acids on your head by accident? Goodness, a, a, just a skull? Thoroughly crushed and disfigured, bro. Thoroughly. Like, they took their time with it. They wanted to make sure it happened. They would, this, this, this wasn't a murder. It was a mission. Is that the girl's bathroom over there? Wait up for, wait up for me a sec. I gotta pee. Okay. Okay, shut up and do it. How do you know about this place, Misuto? You really want to know? I'm the bearer of the new Book of Shadows, the container for this Nirvana in its core. Or I will be anyway. She does not know what the- Satoshi! I mean, Yoshiki! Uh, big brother! That was your brother's voice? You should hurry up and go catch up with him then. And now he can have his way with Satsuki. I 
I have tissues with me. Good job. Okay. Hey, this isn't funny. Why are you, Yukes? Onichan! What? Did she go downstairs? Yukes, hold up. Satsuki's gonna die. I hope she doesn't, but she probably will. Oh, wait, she's dead! <laughs> Satsuki's throat began to convulse. She was no longer able to form words. She could only moan. Blood began flowing up through her esophagus and dribbling down her chin. Jantar! <laughs> Oh my, it seems your jaw's broken and your neck's not looking very straight either. Such a pitiful thing to happen to someone who's only in middle school. Let's hide that face of yours, shall we? I can't even bear to look at you right now, you're so sickening. A repulsive sight indeed. I took the pocket tissues from Satsuki's hand and placed two sheets over her face. They soaked through with blood almost immediately, turning up practically invisible in the process. Oh, and that's gonna suffocate her because it's wet and probably over her mouth. Already asleep? No matter how annoying or resistant they were, they're always so quiet and cute when the life leaves their bodies and turns them into things. Even a piss ant like you will be cute soon enough. Her breathing became more and more erratic as her body rocked with convulsions. The last thing she'd hear before departing this mortal coil would likely be my footfalls as I walked down the stairs away from her. Damn. <laughs> Big brother, where are you? That's fucked. Oh man, that's terrible. I didn't want her to die. I wanted her to make it. I mean, I knew she was going to die, but I didn't think that fast. I can't run anymore. Big brother. Don't trust it. Oh, Misuto, your brother is dead. Sadly, he didn't stand a chance against the gremlin's curse. See, take a look over there. On the floor while I was pointing, there was a mass of organic matter. The only identifiable elements remaining on this clump of meat where a tuft of black hair and a tatter remains of what used to be a white shirt. That's your brother. No. No! It can't be! I'm sorry I couldn't save him. He was calling your name until the bitter end, too. That's not true! Big brother is fine. He told me last night. Big brother! Don't fall. It can't be true! It can't be true! But it is. Oh, by the way, Satsuki's dead too. What? I kicked it down the stairs myself, wanna see? I kicked her. 
And when she hit rock oh, bottom, her jaw split clean open. <laughs> Fucking middle school dits was all wheezing and oh, sputtering. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> oh! Do you get off to like traumatizing kids? Hold on. Yes, this is it. This is what I've been seeking. Just what I'd expect from a heavenly host survivor. Her spirit aura is off the charts. Why? Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? The reason I brought you here is, yes, because I can use you. Satoshi Mochida, your little sister. Is mine. Why does everybody want Yuka? I don't get it. Now all that remains is... Our little group project, Ayumi. I wonder where the last pillar is. Is that a bell? There were no bells in Heavenly Host. Could it have something to do with the final pillar? Ayumi. Th there were definitely bells in Heavenly Host. Man, how did he even get me? I think right here should be a save point. <laughs> Yo, you can't just freaking like do the damage before you actually do the attack. <laughs> Dang, I fell for another one of those stupid traps. Oh, snap, we're going into that weird room now. I wanted to check this out with Aiko, but I didn't. Oh my goodness, my leg is asleep. Stop doing this. Tremendous spiritual, ow! Lost soldier screaming in agony and despair. Best not to go this way right now. Hold on, give me a second, give me a second. Man, I hate when my leg falls asleep like that. But we're in chapter six. How many chapters are there? And what craziness is left? This place didn't exist in Heavenly Host. What craziness is left for us to see? I don't want to run in case we end up getting chased by something. I climbed the long winding staircase. I snaked its way up the walls of the tower. And I hugged those walls the whole time. The entire central area was wide open with nothing but a rickety old guardrail between me and a very, very long fall. As I climbed higher and higher, the Argus Cube light began to blink more and more intently. It has to be here. Sure is high up though. <laughs> Suddenly the bell toll rang out louder and clearer than before with such intense, unavoidable force that I was completely frozen in my tracks and instantly in pain. The same sound had been heard multiple times since arriving in the Nirvana, but this was the first time it had been so overbearing. Even with fingers in my ears, my ears, even with fingers in my ears, my ears continued to pulsate, resonating with the incredible noise. The sound was just too all-encompassing to block out, present even when absent. It hurts. My eardrums are gonna burst. I braced myself for the next toll, expecting it to be the end, but it didn't come. And although the ringing never quite left my ears, it did slowly, it did begin to abate, if only slightly. That was really scary. I hope there aren't any more loud sounds. Oh? Is that Yoshikazu? What did they do to my boy Yanagahori? What have they done to you? The body of Yoshikazu Yanagahori. In addition to being crucified, he also had a stake driven through the back of his head. Why would he be here and who would have done this to him? 
Dang, look what they did to my boy. Yoshikazu. Did I just hear a voice? Or was that still the ringing? I could have sworn that was the unmistakable voice of Sachiko Shinazaki. My daughter? What she got going on? What is she doing? I thought we saved you. I mean, she really saved us that time in the bathroom. And there was a time before that. I had no idea stairs could be this tiring. An athletic bitch. Hold on. Okay. Something written on it is borderline illegible due to the terrible handwriting and poor spelling. The best you can make out is key is hidden. Make them protect it. So basically the key's hidden and there are spirits protecting it. Ah, there was a key in there. That's probably what we needed. Let's go back. Use staircase key. Yep. All right, let's see what's awaiting us up here. Holy crap. Magari? Magari grabbed the now primal beast like Azusa by the hair and pinned her down. Oh well yeah. She she's a she's a, a evil spirit now. Oh, hold still you little bitch. How cute. She thinks she can overpower me. Even if I took her back to the real world though, she'd never be appointed executive officer now. Uh, you're a real pain in the ass, you know that? <laughs> a tall shrine with a bell could be seen from the window, and from its peak there were six columns of light stretching upward. <laughs> Did she really gather all of them? Is she out of her fucking mind? At long last, I'd reached the top, and there it was, the sixth pillar, in all its horrifying glory. It looked like some bizarre growth coming down from the roof, composed entirely of long dead corpses. I observed it in horror, a mouth agape, and a f as a fluttering winged insect scraped against my ear canal. All the corpses' necks had red, ceremoniously looking markings embezzled on them. This sixth and final pillar was the crown. And what a sight it was. So this is the last one. I closed my eyes and reached out to try touching the markings on one of the corpses next. What the hell are you doing? Stop, don't agitate the pillars any more than you already have. You again, huh? Look, just stay out of my way! Stop! I'll take that! As she screamed, Misato leaped there from out of nowhere and snatched the water pillar Crystal Mercy from Magari's chest before she had any idea what was happening. Is that all you've got, Makari of Martuba? Misato looked on in sick pleasure, sticking his tongue out playfully as Magari plummeted to certain doom. Satisfied, he then turned his attention toward the final pillar, which had just finished unsealing. The light began to shine even brighter. I could only watch, stunned and squinting as this new spectacle unfurled before me. What is this? There was a powerful blast of wind. 
and then the pillar crumbled. Unbeknownst to me, the other pillars had crumbled as well. The entire school rumbled and shook beneath our feet. Oh, I'm scared. What's happening? Somebody help me. Suddenly, the entire Nirvana was blanketed with impenetrable darkness. It's as if the whole place vanished, only to be replaced with an empty void. I could sense that I was crossed on the ground, clutching my forehead. I slowly raised my line of sight up, the faintest hint of a glow catching my eye, my attention. Above me, I could see the sky, though it was muted, distorted, and discolored, as if being filtered through a warped purple veil. It looked a bit like the uh, uh, Aurora Borealis. A few moments passed in relative silence, only for the stillness to be broken by a sound echoing from the sky above. It was reminiscent of ice cracking on the surface of a lake. The scenery that lay before me was something out of a dream. Even then, after everything I'd been through, I had a tough time believing it was real. What's happened? There was another sound directly in front of me. I'd best describe it as a mass of metal collapsing to the ground. I turned my head down slightly to see what, it, what, what, what looked like a piece of limestone with an eerie white glow. This was, I knew, the crystallized power of the final pillar. It's the last crystal. I picked it up and almost immediately, Misuto tossed the stone he'd taken from Agari over to me. Ayumi. Ayumi, take out all the crystals you've gathered. That's a fun greeting after all this time. Formalities are meaningless. Take out the crystals and put them all together. There was too much at stake for me to dwell on this. Begrudgingly as instructed, I took the other crystals out from my pocket and fit them together into a single object. They snapped into place snugly and with one final bright light fused inseparably. The result was more or less round crystal with a black sheen reminiscent of hematite. This I would learn was called the Kabbalah Dagra, and it was now complete. So with this, the gremlin can be defeated and all my friends resurrected? <laughs> Nicely done. Misato flashed me a wry smile, but then... Ayumi! Aiko, you're alright! Ayumi, listen. I need to apologize to you. Her clothes have been burned in several spots. Her skin underneath now black with ash or red with blood. The nurse's office. Thank goodness. I wonder if there's anything I can use here to treat burns. What the gremlin burned me with was a spirit fire, so water's no good. Fortunately, the spirit fire is susceptible to talismans, and I had plenty of those on me. That has to be what saved me. But my skin is pretty scorched. I'll need to disinfect it at least. Disinfect? I leaned against the wall and smirked in spite of myself. Am I actually trying to survive in here? I have no way to go home anymore, so what's the point in trying to live any more than I have to? The invincible intelligent agent, huh? What a joke. I literally just walked in here without a care in the world and now look at me, burnt to a crisp. I let myself slide down a wall until I was sitting. Then I stared out the window, defeated and alone. Sis. What did I say to her when I left? See you in half a year? Now I don't even know when I'll see her again. No, that's not true. I won't ever see her again. 
I look down at the floor and breathe a deep sigh. My fate lies here in the school, huh? Alongside Naho, Sayaka, and Haruyuki. There's just no fighting it. I brought this on myself. Stood up and placed my hand on the infirmary door. So I'm gonna continue fighting it anyway until my final breath. So I guess I am trying to survive in here, even if it's just one moment longer. When I opened the door, what I saw chilled me to my core. This was not the school infirmary, this was the clinic from Yoshie's home. What's going on? This is an heavenly host. Then was, there was a person sitting at the desk. Her face wasn't visible from the back, but her identity seemed clear. There's no doubt about it. This was in the document that Magara Mizuki is the cl is the clinic from Yoshie Shinazaki's estate. So that must be Yoshie herself. The nurse was writing something in presumably her journal and was so focused on the task that she remained oblivious to everything else around her. Or at least she seemed oblivious. If she didn't, if she didn't notice me, she didn't care. She just kept on writing. I was a fool. Right now, since Shaki so swallowed in Nirvana, things are peaceful. But who knows how long that will last? What's going to happen if Sachiko's life ends? I've analyzed the anagrams and determined that all the spells written in this book are nothing more than theories. Not a one of them has ever been properly tested. There are no success rates, there's no data of any kind. So why was I naive enough to attempt something so foolish? I've devoted everything I have, my blood, my soul, to an end that was destined to never succeed in the first place. Destined to never succeed? I'm afraid so. You've been striving toward a hopeless idea this whole time. And Yoshie Shinazaki said this herself? That can't be right. You told me I could bring them all back. If I can't, then what was the point? I began to shudder and my voice was going hoarse. Had I made the same mistake twice? Gone after a way to undo things only to make them far, far worse? Yes, you did. Aiko could see how much his revelation was affecting me and bit her lip. She seemed like she'd finally succumbed to her own conscience. It's the same for me. Honestly, I was half in doubt the whole time. Or I guess it would be more accurate to say I never actually believed you'd be able to do it. I'm sorry, I... I led you here to achieve my own goals. You just wanted to see my friends who are gone. I wanted to hear their voices just one last time. This was like a new Aiko. Bearing it all as opposed to hardening her heart like she always had. She wanted friends. And she finally made some. And all she wanted to do was cherish them. Tears streamed down her cheeks faster than she could react to them. She quickly gave up on wiping them away, electing instead to look down and hide her face in her hands. <laughs> Bravo. Before I even realized that Misato had snatched the Kabbalah dagger from my hand with calculated precision. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> nice work. Bravo indeed. <laughs> you. Humans can't be brought back to life. The very notion is absurd. Is your pea brain really so full of flowers and rainbows that you actually believe you could cheat death? Misato's condemnation and contempt seemed to have an effect greater, even greater effect on Aiko than on me. Her face was racked with guilt and sadness. Ah, oh, man, hold on. I was starting to share her expression, however, as the implications of his actions began to dawn on me. Make sure everything's recording. 
I fell backwards into a sitting position on the ground. The book was always meant to destroy, not create. There's not a single page in it about true revival. If the book acknowledges you, it grants you great power. That's it. And you... You lost it. You truly are a worthless bitch. However, even garbage like you isn't completely useless. You were crucial to my plan, and you should thank your lucky stars for that. This, this is the crystallization of the wisdom possessed by the witches. It's everything from inside that book you carelessly lost, Ayumi. Everything. And with it... I can create a new book of shadows! Misuto inserted in Nirvana's crystal into, depre into the depression of his in his book. The skin is nothing more than a case. Using a manuscript left behind by my grandfather. A sharp tone rang out and the entire area was quickly bathed in a contradictory light. Black as night yet bright as the new day, noonday sun. Yes, yes, yes! At long last, in Nirvana! It's spreading! What is that? Take a look! Isn't it spectacular? The sky had what looked like a giant gunshot in it, with spider webbed cracks projecting outward from it. And the gunshot was now growing into a full on gaping hole. And inside that hole, an upside down view of the real world was clearly visible. It was nighttime, so everything was a little dark, but it was absolutely, identifiably the world we knew. And in that world, small black grain like objects began emanating from the floating orb, clusters like locusts and, dance and dancing across the sky. Miss Kuan, look! Through the fissure in the sky, we can see the nighttime scenery from the real world. What is that? Don't tell me where... This is a surprise. Seems like this place is inside the black spear we saw hanging over Tokyo. Does that mean Heavenly Host has already appeared in our world? By all appearances, yes. It's a rather terrifying prospect. If the wall that separates the real world and the ever after were to break and two should become one. I can't even imagine how this plane would manifest itself. That shrine with the bell is fully lit now. Miss Kuan, Satoshi, Kishinuma, let's go. Yes, let's. All right, come on, Yoshiki. Shinazaki, where the hell did you go, damn it? The new book of shadows. With it, I have obtained the full power of the Nirvana. The power to, to, to surpass that gremlin. Okay, so use it and stop her. Her curse is spreading across the whole world, right? Save everyone. That's the whole reason I gathered these crystals, isn't it? <laughs> Bad chance! I don't give two shits about this world or the gremlin or any of that. I just needed you so I could make this book. So you were just using me after all? Yeah, fucking duh! I was clenching my fist so hard that my scrawny arms were quivering. Try as I might to think of a response, there were just no words for this, all I could do was glare. Go ahead and hate me. You're too late to actually make any difference. You see that hole in the sky? It's the beginning of the end. The Nirvana has finally begun seeping into reality. The whole world will take a downturn now, falling prey to absolute chaos and death. It's gotta be fine! 
Every single person on Earth will go stark raving mad. And it's all thanks to you, Ayumi Shinazaki. Your utter obliviousness has ensured that my wish will be fulfilled. In a way, I suppose that makes you a death goddess, doesn't it? The most tragic and deranged one to ever exist. He's beyond corrupt. <laughs> With this eye, <laughs> I... What are you trying to do here? Get revenge, of course. Misato turned around, revealing a startlingly cold, expressionless face. Yet even if his features had no depth, his eyes shone with almost cartoonish malevolence. He had quite literally become the embodiment of pure evil. From a spot in the real world that was clearly visible to us, through the fissure in the sky, a large black monolith-like pillar suddenly sprouted out of the ground. The Nirvana's power lust couldn't be sated by this dimension alone, so it was seems begun spreading there as well. That, my friends, is the eternity war entity war. Come on, Nirvana! That's all you got! You can do better than that, and you will! Because guess who's in control of you? That's right, I am! He pounded the book and just like that, another entity wall formed. This time it spawned beneath the freeway, puncturing and utterly destroying it, scattering countless cars and bikes every which way as if they were toys. What? You ignorant fools! I'll show you my version of justice! The Yagora will never die! Stop! Please! I wasn't asked for believing you! You certainly were. I was keeping track of you through that Argus Cube the whole time. You were like a loyal puppet doing my bidding without even knowing it. Fucking dumbass! The only beings capable of crystallizing the power in the Nirvana are the inheritors of the Shinazaki bloodline, you see. So I had no choice but to let you do the dirty work in my steed. To think it would go this smoothly, though. It took almost no effort to link the Nirvana in the real world. You liar! You double-crosser! You traitor! You told me! You told me I could bring them all back! <laughs> Ah! Whining like a baby can't save you now. The new grandma will be perfect. And you won't have to worry your pretty little head about it anymore. Because I'll be releasing you from your duties as a Shinazaki, understand? This book controls the full power of the Nirvana. And the inheritor of the Book of Shadows, considerable powers are going to be the Martuba's tomb, nor will it be the Shinazaki lineage. It'll be me! I don't care who inherits it, as long as it's not a sick freak like you. Just give me the book. Think about how, think, think about how what you're doing will make sis feel. You a fucking idiot. Nothing I do is gonna make some dead bitch feel a damn thing. Dead bitch. Don't tell me everything you said about Hanoi was a lie too. Misuto flinched slightly. I seem to have struck a nerve. Though how deeply that nerve ran, I couldn't say. He recovered quickly, but still. <laughs> what of it? All you need to know is your sister was a dumbass. Throwing everything away that she worked for. And even sacrificing her life to save the likes of you. My tear glance twitched in pain. Every negative emotion came flooding through me at once. I wanted to pounce on this man. I wanted to wring his neck. I wanted him to fucking die. Your usefulness has come to an end for me. Thanks to you, the end of the world is now closer than ever. All that's left for you now is to repent for your sins and perish. It really is all my fault. Again. 
All those deaths were on me. All the suffering, the pain, the fear was all caused by me. I'll take mercy on you, though, and sing you to meet your sister right now. Prepare to die! Shinazaki, run! Seriously, go! This guy's lost it! You dare speak ill of me? Hmm? I know that peasant face of yours. Who are you again? Kishinuma's stuff is too dangerous! Yeah, I know! Just get away from him! But he's probably right. It was my own reckless behavior that caused all this to happen. It's because I didn't think before I act. Susumoto, Miss Yui, more than Shiki Shinohara, even my sister. It's all my fault. All my fault. I wish I'd never been born. Sachika! Hold on. I tried to scream those words, but my voice was so hoarse that they came out almost like a squeak. I crouched down and buried my face into my hands at this point, and in doing so, I failed to notice the sudden appearance of none other than Sachiko, red dress and all. Shinazaki, no, this isn't your fault. You're not responsible. You just wanted everybody to be happy. You wanted to see all your friends look well. And who the hell could possibly find fault with that? Being tricked isn't your fault. It's the fault of the person who tricked you. So get this on your thick skull. You did nothing wrong. You're not to blame. You're all here, but why? Misuto ceased trying to wrestle with Kishinuma instead of making a grand sweeping motion with his hand. Perhaps he needs to learn when to quit. I felt like I was covered in a thin film of snot and tears by this point, but I put on my most intimidating face I could manage and tried to stare Misuto down. He did not stop and stare back. He did stop and stare back, though it clearly wasn't due to intimidation. In no way you failed. You've left nothing of value behind in this world. What the hell is your problem? You're Satoshi Mochida, huh? In that moment, the entire space shook violently, moving every which way beneath our feet. As this, as this occurred, a massive, virtually indescribable object floated into existence behind us. <laughs> it's the seventh pillar! The Sephiroth of knowledge! I made this happen with the power of my Book of Shadow. What in the world? It's over, Ayumi. With this destructive pillar, it won't just be a simple fissure anymore. The wall between our worlds will break down, and reality will fuse with the Nirvana. Sachiko, get his ass! Sachiko, get his ass! What's happening to your stomach? There was a light emanating from my stomach, but as soon as I caught a glimpse of it, it disappeared. Huh? An illusion? Yes! Nice try. Now let's bring down the wall, shall we? Heavenly else will crumble too, you know. But you'll make a fine sacrifice, Ayumi. As will you, Kuan Niwa. You know me? Of course, you're that famous prodigy. The human that raises standards across the board for medicine, occult studies, and technology. Mochida, Nakashima, and Kishinuma all turned their heads at once to look at Kuan, jaw slightly agape. The three of them had no knowledge of any of this, so all they could do was stare in disbelief. Unfortunately, due to your immense talents, your parent and sister alike have been inevitably corrupted. And look at how well that worked out for them. No, that's not true! Now then, I'm a bit bothered that I couldn't locate the Nirvana's core. 
But no matter. Once the school has been turned into rubble, I've all the time in the world to find it. And then the new book of shadows will be complete. Sachiko, Sachiko, you're the goat. Do something. Miss Kuan looked down at her Ever After Stones, but the spirit meter she'd attached on with it showing a full charge. No good. <laughs> Very nice. Good boy. Tachiko, do something. What do I do? I hesitated for a moment, torn as to whether I should try to stop Misuto or prioritize lending a helping hand to Kishinuma and my friends. I can't let that happen. I will stop you. Huh? How the fuck was that? Stop, you have to stop this! That was the most desperate cry I'd, heard, I'd yet heard from Aiko. Please don't kill her! Sis has nothing to do with this! How pathetic! Just as Miss Kuan screamed, a giant hellish bee spawned right before our eyes. On the front of it was an enormous mouth. It made a beeline straight for Aiko and passed through right through her body. <laughs> Sachiko, stop fucking smiling and do something! Something not unlike black smoke crawled around it for a moment. It roared like a dinosaur twisting his body to and fro, then flew over to the guardrail and exited the scene. The only thing it left behind was Aiko's body without a head. She remained upright for a split second, then tumbled lifelessly over the railing and into the pit. <laughs> Sachiko! <laughs> to bitch with you, heavenly host! Sachiko, do something! Sachiko, do something! As if on cue, the entire schools began to shake violently. So violently, not a single one of us could keep our balance. Ah! Me. This was well beyond any other earthquake we'd ever experienced at Heavenly Host to date. The shaking eventually died down, but things looked a lot different when it did. The sky above us was now blood red with certain sections here and there bursting in black flame. And on that note, Farewell, my guinea pigs. How could this happen? The Nirvana, this school, is going to collapse. Miss Kuan, is there some way back? My Ever After stones aren't fully charged yet. It'll be several hours yet until they are. I was slumped over crying my eyes out as this conversation unfolded. Miss Kuan looked over at me, however, and saw something else. A girl in a red dress standing directly behind me, Sachiko. You may yet be able to save yourself. Sachiko Shinazaki has possessed you. You should listen to what she has to say. I objected strongly for obvious reasons, but I knew she was right, at least about the possession. I could sense Sachiko behind me. I could see her now too, but of everyone else present, Miss Kuan was the only was the only other one who could. No, Miss Kuan, I'm staying with you all. Well, I don't mean to be blunt, but if those tears of yours are true, and you do feel some sense of responsibility for what's happened here, then the only way you can atone is to live on and watch over the future of this world and protect this. If you choose death, even when there's a chance to live, and you're simply giving up, you're running away. No. We don't have time to argue. Go!
I was absolutely inconsolable with Miss Kuancha's smile. She stood behind me and patted Sachiko on the head. Sachiko is responsible for so much pain and torment, who now looked for all the world like a pure, innocent, lost little girl. Reacting to this new stimulus, Sachiko closed one eye and turned her head toward Miss Kuan, a satisfied expression on her face. Please? I'm responsible for so much pain and loss of life, yet only I get to be saved! I had no conscience to go along with this, yet it seemed I was whether I liked it or not. Everything around me began glowing white and my body was lifting off the ground. Be strong. She really was so much like Miss Yui. Below me, I could see Mochita shielding Nakashima from the falling debris while staring at my rapidly ascending body. Kishinuma had stood back, stood back up by now and was watching me as well. No, no, no! Mochita! Nakashima! Miss Kuai! In an instant, the turbulent face of Mochita, Nakashima, Kishinuma, and Miss Kuan all came to a close as the four of them were distinctly and in this in unmistakably crushed before my eyes. <laughs> my vision warped and memories jumbled. No fucking way! Holy shit! And then there was just the sky. The sky that hung above the real world, above our sky. Our world. The black orb was there and it was swelling up bigger and bigger, almost like a fetus rapidly gestating to term. It quickly grew too big to be cont contained and burst open. Strands of black energy shot out in all directions and the entirety of the night was dyed in eerie reddish black. The Nirvana had now broken free of its bonds, and it wasted no time pulling the real world into its embrace. Fuck! This is crazy! Yo, this is crazy! This is so freaking peak, bro! This is so peak! Holy shit! Dog. Dog! I really hope people are watching this, man. I really hope, like, y'all are sticking with this, bro. Because this is crazy. And then the imagery. Like the, the the imagery, like the parallels, the parallels of um. Remember when uh, in, in the first course party, when every when when the heavenly host was first breaking down into a single closed space, in a similar way to how heavenly host is crumbling. Not um, Mochita was shielding Nakashima. Satoshi was shielding Naomi from the debris, just like then. And then, just like in the last game. When Ayumi was basically about to die, and Miss Yui had to tell, and Miss Yui had to encourage her to live on and abandon her so she could live. The same way Miss Kuan just did that right now. Oh my, this is so freaking peak. Guys, guys, yo. That's the end of the episode. If y'all enjoy, like, subscribe, read a comment, or read them all, tap into the next one. I'm so excited to see where this goes. Like, I really hope y'all are watching. I really hope y'all are enjoying because this is so freaking crazy. I love you guys. Oh man, look forward to what's next. I know I am.